I remember the next day waking up alongside her and just looking at each other in the eyes and knowing that like we use each other. I remember just feeling like I did something wrong. And at that point in my life, like I didn't get it. My parents are from Kenya. My family's from Kenya. I am a first generation American. And fast forward to high school, when myself and my friends got our licenses, we had like this newfound freedom, but they just like squandered the responsibility. Very much got involved in the party lifestyle. Fast forward to college, and through experiencing what the world has to offer, I was never happy. You know, in the moment, sure, but it was always temporary. Like, I had to experience it again and again and again. And if I was not experiencing it in that moment, I just like felt miserable. Like, there had to be something more. So I, I specifically remember an encounter with a woman, a friend of mine, and I remember the next day waking up alongside her and leaving that place uh, and just like feeling that's, that's just miserable. I'm just like questioning um, the, just the choices I was making in my relationships, um, the lifestyle I was living. Unfortunately, I was uh, blessed with a wonderful priest that um, had a homily that day that really touched uh, my heart and really spoke to the lifestyle that I was living. I'm um, kind of living this like double life. I stopped going out. I stopped a lot of the habits just that I had. The Lord had just like torn the veil, just like, like ripped it apart from my face. And that year I was introduced by my priests on my campus to the theology of the body. And I was like, I don't have these kind of relationships with my brothers, with my sisters. And like, I desire that. Like I desire to live a life of true authentic love. Like I want to know like what, what is my sexuality actually oriented to? You know, like what is the good that lies in my body, in the way that I live, in what I do, in the choices that I make. I wish I knew this when I was in high school. You know, when I made choices that would lead me down a different path. I wish I had someone just to sit there and tell me like, hey, this is the truth, right? It's your choice again, but this is the truth and you deserve to know this. I look at the kids that we speak to, I'm like, y'all deserve to know this word. For them to know that they're loved, that they're seen, that they're wanted, right? That they are good, that there's more to life than what our world tells them. I want every man to know when they leave that room that like, the Lord is merciful and he's willing to forgive us regardless of what we do. And that's not like a card to be like, hey, you know what, I'm gonna do whatever I, you know, I want to do and you know, I'll just pray to the Lord and ask for his mercy or go to confession and still continue on with the lifestyle I'm living. But I just look at my own life and I just see the Lord literally just like pulling me, you know, and just saying, Jesse, come here, be with me. Jesse, come here, be with me, you know? And if it wasn't for his merciful love, um, I don't know if I would have said yes. I've been so afraid. A quote that comes to mind, I was by St. John Paul the Great, and he says, every encounter with a human being is like an encounter with God himself. And if we all had this viewpoint, right, like our world would be so radically different if we viewed our family, right, in this way, our friends in this manner, strangers that we see. And within the classroom, I have this opportunity to experience the other, the uniqueness of what makes them who they are. And so that's why I love speaking. And that's why I'm a missionary with the Culture Project.